Bitcoin is either going to go to $600,000 or down to $15,000. At least that's the story coming out of the mouths of the market manipulators who are trying to play the game of getting the Bitcoin from your pocket moved over to their pockets. Not a game I'm personally interested in playing. I'm just here stacking sats, building up that long-term wealth profile with Bitcoin. Feels nice not playing that game. But in this video, I'm gonna break that down for you as well as taking a look at the technicals, some of the on-chain indicators showing us just what the heck is going on in the market right now. My name's Lark. Every day I make videos talking about cryptocurrency investing. So if that is a topic that you would like to learn some more about, make sure you are subscribed to the Lark Davis channel. Of course, gently tap on the thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. And of course, click on the notification bell to know when I put out a new video. So let's go ahead and turn over to the charts to get started off with. So as you can see, Bitcoin still trading well below all relevant moving averages. Haven't even got back up to test the 50-day moving average around $38,500 yet, although we are getting closer to testing the 50-day moving average. That would at least be nice, something fresh to look at in the markets. But what is quite interesting is that over the weekend, we did have this happen right here, which may be the test for the Wyckoff pattern. So as you can see, we get this spring moment here. We get a lower low than the initial sell-off that we have. So we can, again, look at that here. We had our initial sell-off. We had our lower low coming in here. And then we have a, another move back down just after that spring, which is our test, which comes right back down to test these previous levels. So we can see that playing out here, that is the test potentially coming in right now for the Wyckoff pattern. Now, if that is the case, then we could be getting to retest all of these moving averages in the coming few weeks. July could be a very interesting month. I think we're at a critical point right now in terms of proving whether or not the Wyckoff pattern is playing out here on the daily time frame. That is for the accumulation pattern. So we did go through a longer phase of the distribution pattern up here. There are still some people who are saying that, well, this is actually redistribution down here, or that this is simply potentially just the second phase. So we're actually just over here now. We're not uh, to the spring phase yet. But personally, I think that this is a very interesting area right now where we could be testing for that spring moment. We're going to find out in the next few days if we keep getting some upside price action for Bitcoin here. If we fail, then I guess back to the drawing board to see where we're at with this pattern. But potentially we could be at that post spring test happening right here. And I know some people are saying, well, come on, Lark, really? This whole Wyckoff thing? I mean, everyone's looking at this now. Surely the whales are looking at this too. It's gonna to be a big fake out. They're gonna send it in whatever direction, you know, we're not looking at. They're gonna, you know, keep manipulating the markets. That is a potential. But a lot of people don't think that this is what's going to happen. A lot of people think that this is BS, right? And the whales are gonna whale. This is kind of what they do. It's uh, patterns of behavior when we have this big money in the market, manipulating the market, playing the market. This is how the game is done, right? They create the hype up here. Everyone's up here saying Bitcoin's gonna go up to a quadrillion dollars. And then of course, you know, all the news articles. And then once we start seeing all the FUD come in, basically we've had four, six weeks straight of just non-stop FUD coming out of the mainstream media. It's been insane. All of this stuff, happening at the same time. I mean, come on, come on. To an extent, you know that's gonna be orchestrated. How do we have all good news for a few months and then all bad news for a few weeks straight? This is the game that they're playing. Now everyone's out here saying Bitcoin's gonna go to zero. We're not zero, but it's going to you know, have a catastrophic collapse. That's where the market sentiment-wise is right now for Bitcoin. But this is a game being played 
by these big money funds. And I think the, the guys from Guggenheim are a pretty good uh, example of that. So Guggenheim's Scott Menard says Bitcoin could sink down to $15,000. So now that Bitcoin's already come down all this way, time for another 50% cut in Bitcoin. Interesting. And yet, and yet, these are the same guys who were saying that Bitcoin is going to go to $600,000. Obviously, if Bitcoin goes down to $15,000 and this guy ends up being right, well, I'm going to buy some Bitcoin there. But you really have to look at the behavior because that's what's really interesting. When we're near this potential bottom and, you know, who can predict the markets? Nobody, right? We all have our models and our guesses and our intuitions and our predictions. But at the end of the day, the market's going to do what the market's going to do. No one can fully control the markets, but they can certainly make a pretty good attempt at pushing it in one direction or the other. And these weeks of nonstop FUD have definitely had their effect on regular investors in the market. And so when we are lower, when Bitcoin's already down massively, they start bringing out all the stories. Oh, Bitcoin's going to drop another 50%. Sell now. Sell now. Sell your Bitcoin. That's the message from these guys, right? These institutional players. And yet, when Bitcoin's at 50, 60, 65 thousand dollars, what are they saying? Bitcoin's going to go to 600 thousand dollars. Buy now. They are selling uh, into strength and they are buying into weakness. And they are putting out news stories saying exactly the opposite. They're telling you to sell into weakness. And then, uh, you know, buy in to when the market's, you know, superheated. This is the game these institutions play. This is what institutional money uh, has brought into the market. Now, before the institutions arrived, we had our native Bitcoin whales, and we still have our native Bitcoin whales playing these very similar games. Now we're just taking it to a whole new level where all these institutional guys can make a phone call over to, to Reuters or someone like that and say, hey, we need to get some of these articles published for us. Can you put these out? And, um, you know, just yesterday we saw Reuters reporting on a, a Binance-related story. But when you read through the story, it's, it's shocking, actually, because all of the relevant facts that you would need are simply not there. It's just Binance being shut down in UK. That's the headline. Sounds pretty scary. One of the world's biggest exchanges. I know a lot of you guys in the UK would have a Binance account. Obviously, I'm a big Binance fan. So anything happening to, you know, this exchange, if there's a global crackdown on Binance, that's, you know, something that should worry your average Binance user. However, they leave out most of the details in such a story. Now, it's really interesting from a perspective of what are they thinking as journalists? We're just going to print the story with almost no context, no details, and just leave people to panic. It's either manipulation or complete journalistic malpractice. Now, with the current state of mainstream media and journalism, journalistic malpractice is certainly possible. But I think the, the idea, I think it was Chomsky in the manufacturing consent, you know, and the, the idea is not that, you know, these... Uh, people who get into these positions in these uh, media organizations are necessarily, you know, behind the curtains and, oh, they get there because they're already thinking like that. They don't have to be told to do this stuff. This is what they do anyway, right? So it's the, it's the system that the institutions are taking advantage of. And it's manipulation up and it's manipulation down. And I know we don't like to talk about manipulation as much when the markets are pumping, but it's manipulated up as well to an extent, right? It's not all manipulation. There is, you know, lots of genuine buying going on in this market, genuine selling going on in this market for a variety of different reasons. But you can see what these guys are trying to do. And of course, it's not just Guggenheim. It's right across the board. J.P. Morgan, we covered one of their big FUD stories the other day. Now J.P. Morgan again. Here we are calling for lower lows, saying the institutions have no appetite for Bitcoin at this price level. They expect more bearish movement below critical price levels. Very interesting. Very interesting. Again, Bit, uh, JP Morgan was calling for $140,000 Bitcoin near the top. And now that the price is down, they're calling for a 
thousand dollar Bitcoin. So they expect the price to continue to drop even further. Again, what's the point of these organizations? Now that we've seen this massive retracement, they're trying to talk you into selling your Bitcoin. And hey, look, you know, you're 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 a, a big boy or a big girl. You're getting up making your own freaking decisions about when you should sell your Bitcoin. But don't be shaken out by these media FUD stories from these institutions, which have proven a time and time again to be some of the world's biggest, most prolific market manipulators. This is the big money game. As I was saying last year or the year before, when we invite the big money in, not that we necessarily invited them, but you know, crypto is open to anybody. They're going to come regardless. But with these big money players coming in, they're bringing all their big money player baggage and games and investing strategies with them. And this is part of that. This is part of that. By the way, if you want to stay up to date with a whole bunch of just extra stuff that you know we don't even talk about here on the YouTube channel, just going super in depth into all kinds of extra investor information. You need to check out Wealth Mastery. It's the weekly investor report that my team and I put together. Every single issue, you get a deep dive on an altcoin. We do a trending coin analysis, the latest airdrops, the latest token sales, an interview with an industry leader, top tier technical analysis, taking the big picture of what's going on in the markets, a step-by-step -step decentralized finance tutorial. Last week, we covered an opportunity where you could have been making like 570 or 80 percent APY in this particular DeFi farm. So there's some incredible opportunities out there. Click on the link down below me here in the description where you can learn more about becoming a member today. It's less than 10 bucks a week, meaning this is the most value-packed and at the same time most affordable investor report on the market. Now. Let's break down some more numbers here for you. So this one was shared by Alex Kruger over on Twitter. He said the current bear market is from a Bitcoin funding perspective even more extreme than the March-April 2020 uh, bear market. So that was the, the big COVID crash. So you can see here, that with the uh, it's actually off the charts, it's below my, below my head here. But um, here we've got just incredible bearishness. So this is way beyond the heights of what we saw during the COVID crash. So the averages are much higher. And yeah, I know we've got more people in the market right now than we did back in 2020. But essentially what you're seeing is that right now, derivatives traders are more bearish than they've basically ever been, which is crazy. The amount of shorting Bitcoin uh, near what is likely a bottom again, can't predict the future. This is just what I'm seeing in the markets right now, but the amount of shorting going on here is absolutely crazy. The amount of bearishness happening here is absolutely crazy. Of course, I guess they've been listening to JP Morgan and Guggenheim, these guys. Interesting, as always, which investor group is losing the most in the market right now? Short-term speculators. So the investor group that is actually realizing the most losses, short-term investors. So the long-term investors, they, um, they're not realizing losses, right? And they have the benefit of having been in Bitcoin earlier, right? But what we see right now happening is all these newer investors who came in ever since Bitcoin passed its all-time high, and they are selling at a loss. They are realizing their losses. So they're not holding on for the long term. They bought hook, line, and sinker. The All the stuff, right? So when the Guggenheim guys were saying, hey, it's going to go to $600,000, they were buying. Now if they're saying it's going to $15,000, they're selling, right? They're not taking the big picture into account here and actually seeing, well, what's going on with Bitcoin? What's the actual long-term picture here for this asset class that goes beyond the day-to-day -day noise? That is really, really important to be keeping in mind as an investor. Here is another bit from a glass node. If you're scared, just remember that Bitcoin long-term holders are doing right now. They are accumulating Bitcoin. So you can see this is the long-term holder net position change. Now, we did have long-term holders selling into the first major rally. They did sell a bit uh, once Bitcoin got up to around $60,000. After that, their selling really slowed down. And what's interesting is that around $65,000, 
long-term holders started to accumulate again. And you can see that it's just been going crazy recently with a massive amount of accumulation happening from long-term Bitcoin holders after this most recent crash down to around $30,000. And during this entire accumulation period, what have the long-term holders been doing? They've been accumulating Bitcoin like freaking crazy. You can see this here. It's a massive amount of Bitcoin being accumulated by long-term holders right now. We also saw minor outflows hitting a five-year low yesterday, which is very, very interesting. So miners are not selling a lot of Bitcoin uh, at the moment. So what we can see here is that right down here, this is the lowest uh, minor outflow for a very, very long time. We did have this big spike here, which was the miners uh, selling on the... Uh, China news, all the stuff happening in China, the miners having to relocate, et cetera, et cetera. We talked about this a lot last week and the week before. But that was that right here, this big sell-off, two big spikes here from the miners. That was them uh, taking profits, uh, selling Bitcoin in order to fund moving to Texas and all that stuff. That happened there. And right now, miners are back to just hodling, mining Bitcoin, and they're not selling Bitcoin at these levels because they didn't, they didn't really want to sell Bitcoin at these levels anyway. You can actually see that um, just before, here, I'm just going to get my get my head out of the way here, but you can see that uh, just before this happened, that was actually one of the lowest levels in years at that point. So we can see right here that before the big crash happened, miners didn't really want to sell any Bitcoin anyway. They sold big time into the initial rush up where we got to around uh, $38,000 or something as a peak there. We saw a lot of selling coming in from miners. We saw more selling coming in from miners at sixty dollars and $62,000. Then they started slowing down their selling a little bit. And actually right around the time of the big crash, they weren't selling anything. Only when their hands were forced with this whole China situation did we actually see the miners stepping in and uh, selling a lot of uh, Bitcoin. So that's something for you to keep in mind here. The miners are, for the most part, trying to accumulate again for probably a longer term position and for prices to basically be going higher for Bitcoin. So watching what the miners do, very, very interesting and informative in terms of you know, the uh, long-term price impacts from the uh, miners, right? So they, they tend to sell into strength. They tend not to sell into weakness. That recent sell-off from miners was uh, a bit of a, a different circumstance in terms of them not usually behaving like that. Now, anyway, now let's have a look at this here. This is the stablecoin supply ratio oscillator. Now, it speaks for itself. You can see when we got down into the green band, it is generally a great time to buy Bitcoin. So the orange line here is the supply of stable coins uh, and the dark line is the price of Bitcoin. Now, what's very, very interesting is that any time that we've had this oscillator coming down into the screen box has been a great time to buy Bitcoin. It was true back here at the start of 2019. It was very true at the start of 2020. It was very true in that that malaise period of late 2020. And it's true again right now. So we're seeing we're actually past, interestingly, we're past the peak of uh, that. So we're actually trending back upwards now, which could indicate that a price rally is getting ready to happen. So that's something for you to keep in mind there as well. And the final bit of news here, the Canadian Purpose Bitcoin ETF has continued to expand its holdings since the sell-off in mid-May. So a total of 3,446 Bitcoin have flowed into the ETF, an average of 86.15 Bitcoin per day. So that essentially means there is a big demand out there for Bitcoin still. In fact, their demand has just been rising again throughout this entire sell-off event. So in spite of all of the, the negative news that we've seen and all the market manipulation and stuff going on, the long-term holders are buying, the miners are trying not to sell into the weakness of the market right now. We have retail buyers, uh, you know, people getting the Bitcoin ETF, for example, 
they're buying Bitcoin, they're adding Bitcoin to their positions. It's just we've had these um, these different sell-offs. There's a lot of fear and panic in the market. A lot of new investors have sold their Bitcoin. But once you realize the game that's being played here, I think it makes it a little bit easier to go day to day in your uh, Bitcoin experience and just keep on stacking sets long term, long term here. That's that's the, the main takeaway from this video. Just keep calm, stack sets. Anyway, your question for today. What do you think about these these guys like Guggenheim calling for 600K at the top and 15K at the bottom? I mean, is it a stretch to say that these guys are purposefully trying to manipulate the market? Are they just getting caught up in the excitement too? Or do you think there is actually something nefarious going on here where these market participants actually are trying to convince you to buy their bags at the top and then to sell them back to them at the bottom by making you overly bullish or overly bearish with these different news stories and stuff that are coming out. Curious to hear your opinion on that down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching today's video and peace out till next time.